as well. There is a word from the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12, 15 verses. I do appreciate uh, Deacon Boyd talking about them puzzle pieces. I, I'm going to brag on y'all again. Y'all showed up. It's getting better back there. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it next Sunday, but, but it's getting to be all good. Amen. Y'all making me change my sermon. That's all right. I think this is the best church on this side of the Mason-Dixie line. Amen. Amen. I think so. I think so. It's with some great, great people. It couldn't be what it is without all of you. Second Samuel chapter 12, beginning at the first verse, you find these words recorded in. It says, David, and he came unto him and said, well, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought, bought and nourished up. And he grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, laid in his, own, in his bosom, and he was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for a wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for a man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth the man, that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anoint thee king over Israel and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if thou had little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Amnon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise, raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in, in, in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by the deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Israel to blaspheme the children, to blaspheme the child also the, the, that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bared unto David, and it was very sick. Man, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says to us that David did wrong. And he messed up pretty bad but David got a word God says I'm not going to kill you but I'm going to let you live and what I want to talk to you from out of these verses I want to talk about a symbol of salvation a symbol of salvation Ushers, you may be seated, and we do thank you for your...
duty. My brothers and my sisters, last week, last week we celebrated the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The fact that Christ rose from the grave affords us an opportunity we would not ordinarily have. If he had not risen from the grave, all hope for us was gone. The hope of man was placed on his shoulders. It is this that gives us a symbol of Christ bearing our sins. We used to sing a song, use it around Easter time, or sometime we would hear it in the old church, the old rugged cross. Anybody remember that song? Sung the song, but didn't always listen to the words of the song. But a verse and the refrain that's grabbed my attention when it came across my mind. It says, on a hill far away, I hear old church in here, stood an old rugged cross. It was the emblem of suffering and shame. It says, I love that old cross where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Here's the refrain. So I'll cherish that old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Here it is. I cling to that old cross and exchange someday for a crown. It's a symbol of salvation. And even that verse allows us to understand that what Jesus told us to do if you're going to be his disciple. He said, you must pick up your cross and follow him daily. And because of that, we're carrying that cross that one day we're going to exchange it for a crown. We look at this, it encourages us to be aware of what Christ did, and that's the hope of what we do each and every Sunday morning as we stand here to make you completely aware of what Christ has done on your behalf. That we understand and that because of what we have in God, uh, that we are able to see a love that cannot be explain when we walk and we understand that we live our lives and our lives also under, helps us to understand that as we walk this road that we're on or this journey that we're on we're going to have some ups and we're going to have some downs we're going to have times where we're going to do what we're supposed to do and we're going to have times where we're not going to do as we should can I get a witness in here? But the point is, is for us to see that the supremacy of God and the sovereignty of God that allows us to understand deeply this fact that God loves us unconditionally. Although David existed way before Christ came, but it still it gives us a good example of what salvation looks like. Gives us a good illustration of what happens or what could happen if you fall short of the glory of God. Don't think that you are uh, 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 immune to it because Romans 3 and 23 tells us we've all. Y'all quiet on here, that's okay have sinned and have come short 
of the glory of God. Me meaning that there's no one in this room right now that have never, ever messed up in their life. All of us, at some point, at some time, have done wrong in our lives. That means that you're in a good place at a good time to hear some good news about a king who came down through 42 generations on your behalf to die on the cross as a slain lamb on behalf of your sin. It's a symbol of salvation. You see, salvation saves the sinner, but it does not take away the ability to sin. Romans 6 and 14 says, for sin will not have no dominion over you since you are under the law, but under grace. That if you're not careful, you don't have to look for it. It'll find you. But just because it finds you doesn't mean you have to fall victim to it, especially when you have Christ who have given you the Holy Spirit to guide you away from it. Y'all still ain't looking at me. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, and the ESV says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man, but God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide you a way of escape. That voice that you hear and y'all be lying and say some told you. No, that's the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you that is not something that you need to be involved in. It's not something that you need to get into, but because you want to do it. I know y'all don't like these sins, sermon. That's okay. Uh, uh, but, but because you want to do it and because you believe it's going to feel good to you, you go on and do it anyway. But, but the Spirit is trying to guide you and lead you away from it. But because you feel like I can get away with it, it is something that you will try to do. If somebody don't see you, you all right. But you need to wonder whether or not God, you ain't got to wonder God sees and God knows everything. If you can't say amen, say ouch, that's okay. And so when we look at this, it helps us to realize as believers that we ought to seek what I call spiritual breakthroughs. I had to look that up because I wondered about it because we often hear that in the church, that I need a breakthrough. Uh, we, we often say that, that, that God is going to give you a, 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 a breakthrough. And, and, and so uh, I, I looked up and I, and I saw something about spiritual breakthrough is when uh, uh, it, it says it is really it's, it's subjective because it depends on the person and what they are experiencing. It, 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 it's not a feeling of emotion that uh, that some want to have that when they've done wrong and they walked away from God and then they come to church and they wonder if they can feel the presence of the Lord. And if they feel the presence, they say, oh, I got my spiritual. Y'all missed it. I, you know, you done drank and smoked, laid around, did everything, lied, cheated, Come on, y'all. That's, that's good. I, I got to preach them both, y'all. You did all that kind of stuff. And then you say, I'm going to go to church on Sunday because I just realized all the stuff I done got into and I'm wondering if I'm going to feel something. And if I feel something when trees sing, or I feel something when Latoya sing, or I feel something when Deacon Harmon pray, then I know the, I got my... Ooh. But it's, it's not a feeling is what I gathered, but it's really, it's a freedom. It's what you should be seeking as it relates to spiritual breakthrough. It's a freedom that you ought to have uh, uh, that allows you to be in the presence of God without feeling a sense of guilt and shame 
because you understand that you've gone to God and you've asked him for forgiveness. And it's through that forgiveness you understand that God will forgive you because he's a God of not just a second chance, but he's a God of another chance. And if I have that freedom, I'm free emotionally. I'm free spiritually. I'm not feeling down and out because I know that God has freed me from feeling the guilt and shame of whatever I've experienced. See, that's the problem many times with folks that have done wrong and they can able to either stay in their wrong or won't want to come out of their wrong is because they feel like the wrong is something that God would never forgive them of. But the word says, if you confess your sins, help somebody in here. He's faithful and he's just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. And here's how you know uh, that you feel this freedom. He said, I will keep you in perfect. That keeps his mind stayed on the, here it is. How do I know I'm free from whatever it is that has been bound in me is that I don't think about it more than I think about God. Y'all done got quiet up in here. I, 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 that I'm trying to mature myself and grow myself in the Lord rather than trying to get better at the experience or even clever at doing what I had done. That if you're still being sneaky, and conniving and be a little bit slicker not that hotel but the next hotel it's getting quiet i ain't gonna buy it off of this corner but i'm gonna get somebody to go get it for me so i don't get caught i'm gonna call anonymously change the name that's on the phone and it says craig but actually it is carla I ain't got to give them none. Me and dumb. I, I, I done sat with too many folks. Y'all too dumb to cheat. I ain't scared to say it. Y'all, that's dumb. Stuff they get caught with. I was like, man, really? That's dumb. I'm me. <laughs> it is. And so when, when we look at it, when we think about it, the freedom that we can have in the presence of God is what we seek after that we don't feel uh, that we have a necessity to continue to do wrong, but have a desire to do right. And therefore we become a symbol of salvation. Let me get to the text. I'm going to get out of your way. I, I, I knew I won't go get too many amens, but, but that's okay. Because many times we wonder how do people end up where they are and what are the reasons? That's what many philosophers would teach or, or many psychologists would say is that you need to look at the person's beginning. So look, let's look at David's beginning. When we look at David's beginning, we really don't pick up any indication that he would experience what he's experienced in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Because when you look at David, when we pick up in 1 Samuel and you pick up around chapter 16, 15, 16, and 17, it gives us a clear picture of a person who is in love with God. You remember the story, Saul was one who was king over Israel. And because Saul had messed up, God had said no longer is he going to walk with Saul as he once was. But now he has chosen one. He said, I found somebody who is after my own heart. Go down to Jesse's house. He's telling Samuel, go down to Jesse's house and you will find the one I've chosen to be king over Israel. David's out in the field looking over his father's sheep. David is the last one that called to the party. The oil of, of is poured over all, was not poured over the other brothers. But finally, when David comes into the room, Samuel said, we're not going to sit down until you bring every son before him. The oil pours over his head. The Bible tells us that if to that point we pick up in round chapter 17, is that what David is going to take his brothers something to eat because they're in the midst of a battle. They've been sitting there for 40 
days listening to a nine foot nine inch giant criticize his God and criticize his army. But yet David, when he shows up on the scene, grown men who have been fearful of this one giant, supposed to know about a God that brought them over a Red Sea, supposed to know about a God that have kept them in the wilderness, supposed to know about a God that have given them to rise to the occasion where they were able to even to march around a wall without even opening up their mouth. And God gave them Jericho. They supposed to know all of this about a great God and they listened to somebody defile God and his army but David when he heard and he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has the audacity to try to defile my God and his army and David said if won't nobody else do it I'll do it they tried to put some stuff on him. This is David's beginning. They tried to put stuff on him. David said, no, no, I don't need this kind of stuff. Because I know a God that took care of me. That when a lion and a bear came into my father's sheep, God gave me the strength to slay the lion and the bear and the same God. That's when you got a freedom. When you know is that the same God that delivered me then will deliver me now. proves the faithfulness that was in David's beginning. And we don't pick up anywhere that we can see in David's beginning uh, that he would fall as he did in chapters 12. But David, when we look at his life, highs and the lows through the battles through the accolades that he received from the people the word of God lets us know in chapter 11 that when all of the other folks were out fighting Dave was still at the crib and the Bible lets uh, uh, my grandma rather used to tell us that an idle mind y'all grandmama heard that same book huh is a devil's workshop that you wonder why you keep falling in the mess at the mess you need to get busy working to change your attitude and your mind stop just laying around idle when you could be doing something for the lord or you could be doing something positive y'all we got too many young folks sitting around idling Picking up video games, they're teaching them how to kill and steal and how to lie and to cheat. Y'all don't like this, that's okay. Sitting idle around watching information on their phone that's not trying to elevate them to do things positive, but trying to encourage them to do things negative. That we're growing up a society now that I believe if we don't get them back in the church or teach them the ways of the Lord, that we're going to have a fallen generation that's not going to know anything about Joseph of Joseph's God. And just like any person that walked this faith of the earth, face of the earth, David had some good days. But then also David had some bad days. David had what we all have had. He had a breakdown. We see his beginning, but then let's look at his breakdowns and figure out what's going on. What happened in the breakdown? The, the breakthrough didn't suggest to us that there was a presence of sin. But the breakdown shows us there was a struggle. See, you don't really know that you got a problem until it puts you in a place that you can look at that problem. We all have struggles, but we try to do this. We try to bury it under things, and it really doesn't become Something that we can deal with until we allow it to be brought to the light. Here's something, y'all, that you need to remember this. Y'all ready? It's kind of deep. 
kind of heavy for you. I mean, I'm telling you, this is something I've been working on for a long time. Some of you heard it before. You ready for it? <laughs> if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. If you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. And because David didn't deal with his issues, the issue now is dealing with him. Realize something, we can hide and we can run from everybody, but you can't hide from God. I tell folks all the time, don't try to convince me you say or that you have a relationship with God. If you were cussing before you walked up to me, I ain't got no problem if you keep cussing, just don't cuss me. Ooh, I'm sorry, preacher. Someone said, what's in the wells of one's soul is going to come up in the buckets of one lip. If it's in you, it's going to come out of you. Who you should be concerned about, what does God see when God sees you? The word of God says, your sin will, y'all don't know, y'all don't like this. Your sin will find you out. Keep on playing with it. It's going to, the rug going to come. He, one thing about it is that what's so uh, 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 consistent, if you will, is that usually people don't fall until they get real high. They wait till you get to your highest point. And that's when they pull the rug from under. And every person, even in the news lately, when you look at all these folks that have reached high points, they've been, had some stuff that they've been able to hide and keep under the shell. But then now, it's all coming to the light. Because they wouldn't deal with it, now it's dealing with them. I'm almost through. But there's something that we can realize and we can see. See, that's the problem, too. You know, a lot of times we didn't got to church. And we didn't got in the church and then we listened to preaching. I was listening to preaching and most preaching is not about sin and salvation. It's about what you can get and what God going to do for you. How bad you are with God on your side. But, 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 but at the truth of the matter should be is that when you stand in the house of the Lord, you want to get a word that's going to help make you right. You ought to feel, uncom if you're feeling uncomfortable, then, then you ought to feel uncomfortable. That means God working with you. You ought to be challenged to want to do right. I can't make you feel comfortable in your mess. You ought to feel uncomfortable in your mess. You ought to feel like I can't keep doing this because the end result could be. Come on, y'all. So, David being king. And it's good that God will give you a word. That's, that's, that's why good is good to have a preacher. Come around. Yeah. I, I, I tell folks all the time, I say, I don't want to be in a world without police, hospitals, restaurants, and preachers. You're going to need one of them at some point in time. Now, that restaurant is subjective, but, you know, we don't cook as much as we used to, so you need a restaurant. All of them ain't good. Oh, y'all said that quick. That's right. But you still need one around. And so God sends a word. Through Nathan, we just read it in your hearing, Nathan comes to David and he presents to him in a parable because he understood David's background. David being a shepherd, understanding what it means to have sheep under your tenure, under your control. And he presents to him and he tells him this story about a man who was rich, didn't need no other because he had many of his own. But he looked and saw something that didn't belong to him. 
And when he saw it, he wanted it for himself. Rather than using his own to help to give a celebration towards a traveler that was coming his way, he took this man, one and only you lamb that he had kept, nourished, and held as his own. And the Bible says, you read it, he says, David was angry. It kindled up in him. It touched him in places. It touched him in a way that he said, look, who is this man? I promise you I'm going to take him out. And I'm going to restore to that man fourfold what has been taken on from him. David had a beginning. David had a breakdown. But then we see David's breakthrough. This is the symbol of salvation is that David becomes aware of his faults. Because when you read uh, that the word of God says, I believe in verse number four, seven, that he said, thou art that man. You the one. You all upset, but you did it. God saw what you did. You went and you took Uriah's wife, the Hittite, you took it in for your own. Then you tried to cover it up. Here's the thing about sin. Sin would take you farther than you want to go. Make you do more than you want to do. Make you stay longer than you want to stay. And make you pay more than you want to pay. The Bible lets us understand that we can gather that it's a year later uh, after David had done thinking he had gotten away with it. Thought he had been able to hide all of the things from everyone else. But he couldn't hide it from God. Thank God for breakthroughs. Somebody say, thank God for breakthroughs because the breakthrough allowed him to see his wrong. Now, here's the shout, y'all. Because when David realized that he had done wrong, when he finds out that he was the one, and look what the sin had done, y'all. Let's, let's not miss it. If you go back and you read that what he did was when he took Bathsheba, some would even say he raped her because he forced himself being king. She couldn't deny him because he's king. She couldn't turn him down because he's king. And so he forces himself, but then he desired to be able to hide, knew he had done wrong. And so when Uriah was out on the battlefield, he said, put him out on the front line. Put him out there and leave him out here. And here's what you need to understand when it comes to sin. Sin just don't get the center. Sometimes it get innocent victims as well. That you need to realize that some things you feel like is only hurt between you and the other person, but it might catch your children, it may catch your grandchildren, it may catch friends, it may catch church members. Realize that it can catch more than you. Sin only allows you to think about what you are getting out of the deal. But it doesn't show you the destructive past that comes behind it. This ain't in it. But, you know, oftentimes we look at commercials and commercials will show you all of these things. Movies will show you all these things. They'll show you the good parts. But they don't include the negative parts. They want to sell you a fantasy that you believe that this is going to be. But it never shows you the devastation. It don't show you the crying young boy. And say, I want my daddy or I want my mama to be together. Hmm. It don't show you the struggles that folks are living in homes because of addictions. That people are not able to have food or keep the lights on. Or they're struggling to be able to just have just the bare necessities because somebody has allowed an addiction to destroy the family. Children are being raised up having to look at these things and then try to figure out what's this about life. And then you have the audacity to come to church, hold your hands up, act like everything is all right, and then go home another way. People and children 
and our world, and we wonder what's wrong with the kids, what's wrong with them. They hadn't seen a good example. And they're schizophrenic. That's why if you look on Facebook, they talking about one thing and cussing about this and then praising God the next second. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. How one minute you're doing this. That's why you can have on TV show people saying all kinds of cuss words and then they want to say, I want to thank God. For what? And you go with the funeral service and it smells like weed. Because they can't deal with the death. And so they're taking something externally. They're trying to help them with something externally. Taking something internally, they're helping them with something externally that they can't deal with. And so they'd rather go to a drug than go to a God. We have to look at the devastation and the destruction of breakdowns. But I just can't leave you there. Because when God has something in your destiny, and when God has something for you, you become a symbol of salvation. Because included in David's breakthrough is that we read in chapter 14 is that David made a decision right then in the moment once he came to the realization uh, that he had sinned against God and that he had messed up. David said, I've seen Messed up. He admitted his wrong. And that's why we pick up and I'm going to preach on Psalm 51 probably next Sunday if the Lord says the same. And if you read Psalm 32 that goes along with it, that David understood the mess that he had made. He understood the issue that he had created. But the good news came to David that God says, even though you messed up, I'm not going to kill you. Here comes somebody shouting just in case you want to shout. Yes, because God has something left and laid out in your destiny. He won't even let you mess it up. And that even when you mess up, if he got something for you, he won't even let you mess it up. And that he'll find a way to get you to come back. That's your breakthrough. Put you in a place of freedom. And if I could borrow from Psalm 51, David said, even God, if you created me, the clean heart, and you renew the right spirit within me, even though I've messed up, I got the freedom now because you have changed and you've given me salvation you've forgiven me of it that I don't have to be ashamed about what I messed up of what I've done but I teach somebody else that you ain't got to walk that way you ain't got to do that you don't have to travel that pathway I'll let somebody know that they don't have to be that kind of person but be the kind of person that God has created me is anybody glad that you are a symbol of God's salvation y'all looking at me strange but we've all in here messed up we've all fallen short we've all had an issue but thank God for Jesus had died on the cross that was buried in a grave but rose on that third day morning and now I can be a symbol of what he is and what he can do and how he can fix how he can turn around won't God do it won't God do it all you got to say Lord forgive me Lord cleanse me Lord wash me Lord straighten me Lord deliver me help me to be better that I can help somebody else and anybody want to be a symbol of what God can do in your life I know we got X some of everything in here I know we got some folk done showing up been some low down folks in here I know we got some folk know how to do it and can do it well but aren't you glad that God has delivered you and if he delivered you say I'm a symbol of his salvation I don't look like what I've been through I don't see you can't see the mess I've been in you can't see the trouble I've had but I serve a God that is able anybody glad he's able if you couldn't shout earlier you ought to be shouting right now because when you look back over your life see what the Lord has brought you out of See how he fixed your life up. See how he changed you. And then he'll use you to bless somebody else. That he'll use you to change somebody else's life. That he'll use you that you can tell somebody that I am. Oh, Lord. I am. Yes, I am. I am a living testimony 
Anybody glad that you are living testimony? Aren't you glad what he did in your life? Aren't you glad that he cleaned you up? Aren't you glad that he took the thirst, took the taste, took the struggle out of your life? And you'll let somebody know you don't know you aren't there. You can't tell me what the Lord won't do. What he's done for others, he'll do. Anybody know he'll do the same thing. I got the freedom to lift up my hands. I got the freedom to open up my mouth. I got the freedom to tell God thank you. I don't mind. Ain't always done what I'm supposed to do. Ain't always said what I'm supposed to say. But I thank God. He looked at my folks and still supplied my needs. Aren't you glad? He's good. 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 All of the time, the more I call him, the better I feel. This ain't your shout, but this my shout. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ain't no secret, ain't no secret. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Shout like he done saved you. Shout like he done changed you. Shout like he done brought you out. Anybody glad? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I need some more folks. That shown up know you was a wretch undone. I need some folks up in here that showed up don't mind. Said I know he did it. Did it for me. He did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. Look at me. May not be what I supposed to be. But God. God. God, God is not through with me yet. When he, when he, when he, when he get through with me, yeah, I shall, I shall come forth as pure gold. Glory, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, since I laid my burden down, yeah, 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 yeah. Some folk don't know when to shout. Some folks still thinking about what they did. Tell the devil, you a lie. You can't have another day, another minute of my life. I've got to give my life to God today because he's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. Look at somebody. Tell them he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it. B, B. B. symbol of salvation we all are symbol of salvation of folks that God saw us in our breakdown but was still willing to give us a breakthrough the 
the breakdown shows the struggle. But the breakthrough makes you a symbol of salvation. If folks want to remind you of what you used to be, tell them if they want to live in your past, they can keep living back there. But I don't live in my past because the past is the past. I'm looking towards my future. So be a symbol today. Doors of the church is open. You don't know the Lord.